Hi guys, so let's talk about a Google interview question today. So the question is that you are given a list of movies where the ith movie has a duration of time i minutes and you have to return the number of pairs of movies for which their total duration in minutes is divisible by 60. So formally we want that the number of indices the number of indices i comma j such that i is less than j and time i plus time j is divisible by 60. Input constraints are that the length of time array can be up to 1 million and the elements in the time array can be up to 100 million. Okay, so let's look at a test case to understand this question. So test case is that time array is 30, 20, 150, 140 and there are three pairs whose sum is divisible by 60. So those three pairs are this, uh, like 30 plus 150. If you add these two, you will get 180, which is divisible by 60, this 30 and 150 and then 20 plus 100. If you add them, you will get 120, which is divisible by 60 and similarly 20 plus 40. If you add these two, you will get 60, which is divisible by 60. So brute force way to solve this question is that you generate all the pairs and check if their sum is coming, whatever their sum is coming out to be, if that is divisible by 60 or not, and accordingly update the, your answer. But uh, that would take like order of n square time. Let's look at how we can solve this with a better optimized solution. So one, like before jumping into the solution, we should know that the property of modulus operator is that it could be distributed over addition. So if a plus b mod 60, can be written as a mod 60 plus b mod 60 whole 60. In case you do not know that, so I have made another video which we are on the modular inverse where I, have ex where I have explained these modular properties. So we want that time i plus time j should be divisible by 60. So what we want is that whatever the sum comes out to be, that mod 60 should be zero because if something is divisible by 60, then it means that if you take the remainder with that number, then that remainder should come out to be zero. And by the property of the modulus operator, we want that a mod 60 plus b mod 60. That is, we want the numbers whose remainders when added will also come out to be divisible by 60. So that can only happen in two scenarios. So one of the scenarios is that if the numbers a and b are themselves divisible by 60, because then a mod 60 will come out to be zero and then b mod 60 will come out to be zero and zero plus zero is zero and like zero is divisible by 60. Okay. So one scenario is this, like example is that, let's say A was 120 and B was 160, 160. So both 120 and 60 are divisible by 60. So you will add them so that will also come out, the sum will also come out to be divisible by 60. Another property, like another scenario is uh, that whatever we remainder we obtain, when we sum those remainder, the sum comes out to be 60. So one example is that if A is 40 and B is 140, if you will take their remainder, so a like 40 mod 60 will come out to be 40 and 140 mod 60 will come out to be 20. If you add them 40 plus 20 is 60 which is divisible by 60 and you can also see that if you add 40 plus 140 it will come out to be 180 which is divisible by 60. So these two properties are actually going to help us in building the solution and uh, because if I tell you that hey I give you a number uh, let's say I give you 40 only and I want that what are the potential candidates like what are the possible values of B which will give us A plus B mod 60 0. So B can only be those numbers whose modulus with 60 comes out to be 20. Okay so those numbers are 20 and then 140 similarly 80 and uh, 200 is also that number. So like this. Okay so Let's see how we can use this, these particular two observations. So let's take the array which was in the test case, 30, 20, 150, 140, and let's like look at the number 100. So here I am storing a modular to count mapping. So modular to count mapping is representing that, uh, and like I'm only considering the numbers before 100. Okay, so modular to count mapping represents that how many numbers are there in the array whose modular comes out to be comes out to be this particular uh, number, okay, which is on the left side of the arrow. So like uh, among these three numbers, there is only one number 20 whose modulus will come out to be 20. Hence, this is one. Similarly, there are two numbers whose modulus will come out to be 30. That is 30 and 150. Hence, this is two. Now I want that how many numbers are before 100, which when added with 100 will give us a number divisible by 60. So that is pretty simple. Like our A here is 100. I take a mod 60 which will come out to be 40 okay so I want those numbers whose remainder is 20 because like we want the number 60 minus 40 
that is 20 whose remainders are 20 so there is only one such number so there is only one number which when added with 100 will give up give us the sum which is divisible by 60 and that was our original question as well like we will do this for every number in the array and that's how we will obtain the answer so the only thing is that we should know this mapping of the numbers before like if we are calculating the answer for the ith index then we should know this modulo to count mapping for all the numbers from 0 to i minus 1 so we can build that very easily so like let me show you how we can build that let's start iterating from left to right okay initially the mapping is empty and let's also keep this answer which will keep on updating so first number is 30 so i need to find like mapping is empty so we cannot do anything so i will add this mapping in the map that there is one number whose remainder uh, whose modulo with 60 is 30 okay then the second number comes out to be 20 so i need to see if there is any number which has modulo 40 in our mapping there is no number so again we can't do anything i add this mapping here now we are at 150 so 150 mod 30 will come mod 60 will come out to be 30 so i need to check if there is any number in this map which has modulo 30 so there is this one number so we add one to our answer because 150 plus 30 will come out to be 180 and that is divisible by 60 and i also and after adding one i update the mapping so there are now two numbers whose modulus is 30 the other number is 100 so 100 mod 60 is 40 i need to see if there is any number whose modulus comes out to be 20 okay so there is one number so i'll update my answer with this one plus one two and i update my mapping so this will come out to be one then the other number is 40 so we need to check if there is any number whose remainder is 20 so there is one so we update the answer here and we update the mapping as well so eventually our answer comes out to be 30 which was also in the test case okay so let's look at the code so code is pretty simple we are implementing this api which accepts the time array so i've made a modular counts array of size 60 and i've initialized it with zero so the size is 60 because we want to find the numbers divisible by 60 and the remainder can vary from 0 to 59 only if you will take the mod so that's why the size of array is 60 and initially the counts are all zero this is our answer i started iterating over each element of this time array i find the modulus and then if i i check if the modulus is zero so this is to count basically uh, tackle the case where the numbers are divisible by 60 itself like the cases where you know a is 120 and b is 60 these kind of cases so if modulus is 0 we check we increment the answer by the count stored in mod count 0th index okay else we find uh, the count of the numbers which have remainder 60 minus mod okay and we update the answer and eventually we update this modular mapping as well modular counts mapping and finally we return the answer so this solution has order and time complexity and space complexity is only order one because we are only using an array of size 60 and so the link of the problem statement is given in the description you can check that out and solve this so thank you guys for watching please do not forget to like subscribe and comment on this video i'll see you all next time